Hey folks, Chuck here again with Hillbilly Half Acre Homestead. And uh, thought some of you guys might like an update on the Caternix quail. Uh, they are doing very well. We're, we're getting anywhere out of 10, out of 10 quail hens, we're getting anywhere from three to seven eggs per day. Um, we have got as many as nine, but that's only happened a couple of times. But the heat being what it has been, they've, been, they've cut back quite a bit. The heat, everything here, the, ch the, the heat has caused the, uh, the chickens to start molting. And uh, there's a little egg. That's what they look like. Anyway, there were some folks asking uh, some questions about these quail, okay? First of all, the best, to the best of my knowledge, the best of my research, these guys need about one square foot of cage space per bird. These cages are 30 inches wide, 8 inches tall, 24 inches deep. Now the 8 inches tall, the reason I made these cages 8 inches tall is if you're not, if you're just thinking about getting into quail and you've never kept quail, these guys can get startled, okay? You can walk up or something out here in the barnyard could suddenly make a loud noise. And these guys, if you've ever seen quail, the way Bob White quail or, or what have you in the wild, the way they flush whenever they get startled and they'll take off. Okay, these guys try to do that. Okay, if they get startled, they'll try to flush and take off flying. And what happens is, is if you've got a big tall cage, they can pick up enough speed that they'll actually hit the ceiling hard enough that it'll bust their head open. Back to what I was talking about. This cage 30 or two or two and a half feet by two feet by eight inches tall. Okay, when you're figuring square feet, you only use length times width. And so two and a half by times two is naturally five square feet. This cage will hold five quail. Now ideally what we do is we'll put a male to four females. We do have some eggs in the incubator now that are supposed to be hatching, I think, today. I'll have to double check with my wife. I think she said we were supposed to have some, some quail hatching today. That'll be nice. I'd like to see some quail hatch out, but I think she had 20, 20 uh, eggs that were due to hatch today. So if if so, we'll catch a little. We'll try to catch a little video of that and 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 show you that and show you the little baby quail and maybe even show you some you know just fresh out of the just fresh out of the egg you know hatch and that way you can see just how tiny these guys are when they're when they're hatched. Somebody asked about using a rabbit hutch. Okay, that can be done. All right, I'm sorry, I bumped the camera here. See this rabbit hutch? There's two, there's a little Netherland dwarf and a, and a New Zealand red, a young New Zealand red rabbit in there. She's chewing on some alfalfa hay. They're just loving life. See, I've got the, I need to flush out the lines there. It looks like some brown algae trying to grow in there. But uh, I've got the automatic waterers. Yes, you can put those things on chicken wire. They do angle up. If you'll notice this one right here on the end. They do angle up. See that? See how it points up? But guess what? That doesn't hurt a thing. The rabbits still know exactly how to get water out of there. And it works just fine. Okay? Just to throw that in. But see this rabbit hutch? You see how tall that is? Here, I've got my tape measure on me. Let me show you. Okay? From the floor here to the ceiling where this tin is, is 30 inches. That's quite a bit of difference for that little quail. To, to fly from here if she were to get startled one of those girls were to get startled and they took off flying that's quite a bit of distance for them to pick up speed before they crash into this tin on the inside and they would hurt themselves very badly but you can I'm not here to tell you you can't use a rabbit hutch what I'm telling you is if you have a rabbit hutch similar to this one or maybe a smaller one maybe one that's only that big okay Here's what you can do. Measure off eight inches. Okay. Put you a platform. 
about eight inches from there, which would be where here. Okay, put you a platform and a floor. Make you a door down here. Put you some quail down here on the bottom. Put you some more quail here. Okay, so measure from here another eight inches. Guess what? You can put another floor here. And then you've got another eight inches here still before you get to the top. So you could have, you could effectively turn your your rabbit hutch into a multi-story quail condo. Okay? And you can section it up if you want to keep, like, here's, here, here's an idea, okay? Say you had a two foot by 30 inch by, or two and a half by two foot rabbit hutch. You divide it up into three sections, okay? You've effectively got the same thing that I built there with all wire cages. The only difference is I prefer the all wire. Me, I believe they're more sanitary because the wire doesn't soak up urine. It doesn't it doesn't harbor uh, bacteria and things like that that this wood does, okay? Rabbits, quail, chickens, whatever you have in there, they pee on this wood, that wood soaks up that urine, okay? And there are so many uh, unsanitary uh, microbes that would just love to grow in that urine-soaked wood. And it's unsanitary. Yeah, you see, I'm doing it. I've got animals here. It's not by choice. This is just what I have. Okay? Someday, I may be able to replace this. Once I get some more wire, like that wire there, I may be able to replace this. It won't be this tall. For my rabbits, I make them about 12 to 14 inches tall. So it would be, see, actually I actually I could make a two-tier rabbit hutch out of this. I, I don't need to do that. Okay, but anyway, if you've got a rabbit hutch, it doesn't matter what size. You only need eight inches of ceiling height for the birds. So, keeping that in mind, measure it out, you know. Uh, Decide for yourself how many tiers you could have in your rabbit hutch. You could have, if you had, if you had something like this, and you had, you know, um, a three tier. Okay, you could have one male and four females here in the top. On the middle tier, you could have one male and four females here in the center. On the bottom, on the bottom, you could have. Instead of putting a breeding set in there of a male and four females, put your younger birds in there because you can put more younger birds in that section. We keep ours indoors until it's safe for them to be outside without a light or a heat source. This only has three hens in it right now in a rooster. So I could have one more bird in here. This one right here has three hens in a rooster so I could have one more bird in here. Now this one on the bottom, Oh, the same thing. It's got three hens and a rooster. So I could I could actually have, if I had three more hens, three more hens and I would have this as full as I want it to have. Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you, them birds don't need that much space. Uh, you know, you could put seven or eight in there. Well, you know, this is my cage. These are my birds. And I like my birds more than that. You know, I want them to have the space that I think, you know, there's people that say they could, you know, a half a square foot per bird is fine. I give mine a, a whole square foot per bird. That way, they can't anybody come up to me and say, oh, you're mistreating those birds. You've got them crowded in there and, and blah, blah, blah. Well, the only way I could, you could possibly say that I'm mistreating these birds is because, just like with the last video, I think, this is piled up again and it needs to be cleaned up and scraped off. But, I don't know if you can see it in the camera shot, all of that, all of that manure, all of that manure, all of this falls on the ground and the chicken scratch through it and it gets mixed into the soil. Middle and top layer, birds can't touch it. Okay, see all the wood? Chickens only touch, or the quail only touch the wire. And this is three quarters of an inch of wood on either side that the all wire cage touches. Okay, and very little manure touches that because I have planned to get some 2 by 4s 
and honestly that's all you need to buy to build a frame like this to put these all wire cages in okay uh, if you guys are interested in you know seeing how I build the all wire cages and seeing how I build the frame uh, if you could drop me a comment or an email or something uh, hillbilly homestead at outlook.com or just uh, leave a comment under this video and let me know that you're interested in seeing that I'm thinking about making another one of these because like I said we've got some quail that are ready to pretty soon to come out of the incubator and if they do well I'm gonna need a place to keep them uh, because we'll eat the roosters but I want to build these up a little bit more first before we start just culling them all out and uh, I want to get built up with my breeding stock a little bit more first and in order to do that I'm going to need some more breeding pens so uh, I may just build one if you but if you guys are interested in seeing I'm going to I think I'm going to build another one pretty much the way I did this one if you guys are interested in seeing that let me know you know if I don't really if I don't really uh have a, you know anybody that seems interested in seeing something like that I may not go to the trouble of of uh, filming it as I, as I do it I mean it's a pretty simple process but the only thing is is when I went through building this one I didn't have a plan to go by I pretty much just went by the size of the cage I was going to use and I pretty much made the plans and built it as I or, or I planned it as I built it in other words you know and uh, for two reasons. Number one, I didn't uh, I didn't know when I started out exactly what I wanted the end product to look like, and I had to use building materials that I had on hand. You know, we're on a limited income around here, as I'm sure most homesteaders are, and uh, the. Uh, I just had to use what was here, you know, and I did have some lumber, some two by fours and what have you. These were rough two by fours. I think this was uh, sycamore or I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, this was sycamore wood. It was a uh, rough lumber that came from a local sawmill. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in that, interested in how I build the all wire cages, uh, when I build some more, I, I made this one little latch here. And it's working out really well for this. You'll see we've just got baling wire on these, but this latch right here really working out well. We were actually having quail that were figuring out all they had to do was stick their head in here, and that door would open up, and they were hopping out. We'd come out here, and we'd find them running around on the ground and what have you, and, uh, which would be okay, except these guys can fly a little bit, and I don't want to end up having to chase half my quail back into the pasture back here somewhere. And, Especially when they get in the tall grass, the only thing that's going to find them, it ain't going to be me. It'll probably be a big old snake or something out there, and I'll end up without with even less quail. So I like the way that worked out, and uh, I'll be building some latches like that for all of them in the future. So uh, I just built that one for the time being to see how it would work right. out. I, I like to do a test run on something that I throw together here hillbilly style. I try to do a test run on it and decide if it's going to work for me before I start trying to make a change on everything. So I may make some more. I might even. So I don't know if this helps anybody. I hope it does. I hope it answers some questions. I know I've gotten some questions and I tried to answer those in in uh, comments. But So I thought I would follow up what I put in the comment with this and just uh they said a picture's worth a thousand words so well keeping that in mind i guess that means i could have shut up a long time ago and just showed you the picture but anyway y'all have a great day and uh hope hope this helps uh hit that like button if it does or if you like the video uh, appreciate you hitting the like button if you don't like it hit the hit the thumbs down that's fine i i, I still sleep at night i, I promise you if I didn't cover anything here and you'd like to know a little something more or something else, drop me a line. Let me know. Uh, I'll follow up on what I can. It's not always when somebody asks me a question, I may not get back with you 
uh, some kind of a video response that day or the next day. It might take me a week or two, but I, I'll try to get to it, I promise. So there's just a lot going on, and sometimes it takes me a little bit to get to something. But, uh, okay. Have a good one, folks. God bless.